create when we have something subconscious, this suppressed part before. into it you know if you don't know the real meaning just the word and the content of the ark or of the box of the pandora in the greek is all the evils of the world mm. now with and en en engraved script if you look into the Pandora's box myth, what you get is basically um, uh, um, amphora made out of clay. This is the closest translation of the original Greek language that was put in a box out of the same uh, type of wood with exactly the same length, width and height like the really? Ark of the Covenant. Um, and also the other things of the myths are kind of similar. If you look to the to the uh, Christian part, you have Adam and Eve, and hardly anyone knows the the true background story of this. Adam had a first wife, Lilith, yeah. and actually it was a, a kind of evil intent by Satan because Satan realized that Adam is not falling. And uh, um, but he was kind of fighting with Lilith because Lilith kept him in balance, mm -hmm. and um, uh, so he created a second wife for Adam, an artificial creature that was kind of designed as the perfect sexual match and the perfect uh, match for Adam, and uh, he just replaced, managed to to convince Adam to to expel Lilith and take Eve. I have never and heard this is, that this story before. I've never heard that before, Harald. <laughs> yeah, she was living outside of the Garden of Paradise. He didn't kill Lilith, but he sent her away. So she left the garden and lived outside of the garden. And they still were in contact. This is all in the Kabbalistic tradition. You can read these details. Hmm. And... Um, uh, then actually Eve didn't balance him, didn't help him to find the right measures and uh, stayed to, to his inner truth, but uh, he fell under her influence. And with uh, Pandora, it's kind of the same thing. The Greek character that is representing Satan uh, created uh, Pandora to basically tempt one of the other important figures in, in the Greek mythology with the outcome that actually um, humanity got punished yeah. in the way humanity got punished. And also the topic is kind of the decision whether they want to stay emotional beings or go, go into the um, intelligence technological direction. The, the, the source of the struggle was that humanity started to use fire and the gods didn't like us using fire, so this was what, what it was all about, about developing mental abilities. Um, if you put the two together, there's exactly one interesting point that completely got lost in the Christian mythology. This is the content of the Ark. And the content of the Ark, or of the box of the Pandora in the Greek, is all the evils of the world. Mm. Now, then you can take you can take a third uh, uh, source to 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 jigsaw puzzle around with all these ancient things. It's it's like what is the Egyptian pyramid? If you take the measure again of this wooden box, this is the key. The measure of this wooden box is absolutely the key to put this thing together again. It perfectly matches into the sarcophagus of the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid. Wow! And once you once you realize this and you ask yourself what actually was in the king's chamber, it's the crystal of destiny. It's an Atlantean artifact. Uh, Edgar Cayce had a channeling on that topic that he uh, visualized the Atlantean cultures and he said actually they had a set of triangular and rectangular pyramids with um, symmetric crystals in the chambers and um, 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 
capstone of a different material that was not described in the Edgar Cayce thing. But this is actually what you find in Egypt. You had also the pyramid with the king's chamber, and then in the wooden box there's a crystal that has a certain symmetry that looks like basically the pyramid, whether it's triangular or rectangular. Both types were existing in Atlantis. And then you mirror the pyramid and merge the two figures so that from the side you see a Star of David. This is the crystal form that was in the box. From there, um, you kind of realize, okay, they, they um, copied the design of the Atlantean pyramids in Cairo and mounted the two devices that they had still from Atlantean times, the capstone and this crystal and the king's chamber together. Now, how does this bind to... Um, um, to, to the mythologies again, if you if you deal with these crystals, especially this cut of a quartz crystal and exactly this uh, um, geometry, I know scientists who work on this topic. And these crystals self-charge with emotional and mental fields. It's like like emotion and thought is pulled into this crystal and uh, up concentrates to extreme levels of energy densities because of just of the geometry of the crystal to a point where it bends space-time because of the, the extreme extent of stored energy. So this is kind of what the crystal is. Now we start to understand how the myth basically came into life by, by um, the degeneration of the understanding of what it is. If you have this um, twin crystal and you mistranslate from the early uh, Semitic languages, um, you come to from, from the twin idea to the twin idea. So you make a, a symmetric crystal into two plates and there's something written in it on energetic level, but if you don't understand the uh, energetic level, it ends up as something engraved into it. You know, if you don't know the real meaning, just the words can be mis misunderstood. Also, the the um, metaphor the Greek people used as the transport amphor. Mm -hmm. It's something made of stone that has a content. Yeah? So if I would be a stupid Greek, guy from that time, and I, tr I would try to describe a crystal that carries uh, bioenergetic information, and I don't know exactly what the technology is, I would use the metaphor of a, of a transport on four that carries all the evil of the world, Right. if this is the content. Now, now uh, we have one problem, and the one problem is actually that... Uh, in the Hebrew tradition, you have the Ten Commandments written in it. In the Greek tradition, it is all the evils of the world. So it's a completely different content at first sight, but only at first sight, because um, we need to go again back to the pyramid to see how this works as a quantum computer to understand that actually there is no difference. The Ten Commandments are all the evils of the world. And that and this is, is what I found so fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we really take, need to take it step by step because I can see the Christian community standing up and screaming now. <laughs> <laughs> That's but it probably, is a, it is a probably Trojan, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a Trojan horse in itself. And uh, it's a big relief if you... Dissolve this thing and realize it's not about uh, um, kind of dropping the Ten Commandments and then becoming evil. It's the opposite. It's about dropping the commandments and becoming conscious again. The decision whether you are evil or not only then is possible the moment you get conscious. As long as you're unconscious or subconscious, you do not have control about what you bring into life. And then evil unfolds. So this is how it works, actually. Right. Um, but we need to go back to the, to the pyramid design. And um, 
if you look into the scripts, you have kind of the the crystal with all these stored things in the king's chamber, and then you have the capstone that, according to Arab uh, traditions and scripts, used to glow in a bluish light every now and then. It was highly telepathic. So people used to sit in front of that stone and communicate with it. And inside uh, this stone, the voice that was coming, telepathic voice that was co coming out was in e Egyptian time associated with Ra, the sun god, uh -huh. but also with um, the myth of um, um, Phoenix from the Ash. Yeah, it was associated with this Phoenix thing, the myth. Um, if you look for for an understanding, uh, the um, the Egyptian word for this capstone was ben ben, and it is it is used actually in two different meanings. It is used as the meaning of capstone for the geometry and the architectural function in the pyramid, but it is also the Egyptian expression for black goo. Mm -hmm. And black goo is exactly this blue shining magical stone with telepathic uh, abilities, where a spirit talks out of it, that is known from all over the world, that is known to be the center and the source of actually all cultures and cults that utilize blood and fire sacrifice. Wow. Um, so you realize actually the Egyptian god Ra also was one of these bastards that was demanding blood and fire sacrifice from the people he inspired. Yeah. This is basically wherever you look into, you, you, it, it started early with these black stones. Um, it started in, in early times when still the women were in power, um, kind of prior to late Stone Age. I don't know exactly how this was organized. There's hardly any data about that time. But there are, even in Germany, underground facilities that predate any historic event uh, where you could find these blue shining um, crystals stored and then the facilities were completely sealed. This might date back to a point where actually the men of this planet decided that the black magic applications of the female high priests were going too far and getting too dark, so they decided to remove them from power, just to fall for the same thing later. And then the man also went into the under the influence of these black magic uh, um, traditions demanding blood and fire sacrifice. And if you want to understand what this stone is, you can. You need to go even further back to a certain point uh, because you find this in uh, meteorite crash sites. Hmm. Um, we had our samples from one in Paraguay where you can exactly see that you have all these tectites, these broken stones typical for, for a site where a meteorite crashed into planet Earth. And in the center of the site, you have a quite big amount of oil, not just oil stone. And when you extract the oil from this oil stone, you get black goo that is a self-organizing intelligent liquid. And if you talk to the spirit that is in this liquid, you talk to Satan. You, you have to understand that a lot of my viewers now are going, whoa. <laughs> it's a lot. I know. I know. It's, it's a lot, lot. But it all builds um, on itself. And you, you, we're, we're getting there. Yes. It's, it, maybe it's helpful to understand that this is normal biology of a planet. Our planet also has a black goo. It flows in ley lines deep underground. Sometimes when mountain areas rise, these ley lines are cut off and then you can harvest the black goo in, in, in caves on the surface of the stones when they're pressed through the stones because they cannot flow anymore after being cut off. You have uh, oil dwells in Iran that deliver unrefinable oil that is also with this intelligence. You had this incident in Falkland 
where it was all about getting access to uh, black goo, earth type black goo resources. So you had the drill, the deep drill in the Gulf of Mexico that ended up in, uh, I think, I, I don't want to mention the name of the country, a torpedo that killed the setup. This was about extracting black goo from the huge bubble that is under the Gulf of Mexico, that in Indian tradition is the eye of the planet kind of the consciousness power that interacts with uh, uh, higher structures in the universe. So this is like all part of the big fractal of life. So it's completely normal to have a black goo. And if you have one black goo that is earth type and one black goo that comes as a meteorite shower down on the ground, you can kind of make the story and understand that we are visited by an alien planetary consciousness and this is what we regard as duality because our guest is not very friendly. Our guest is not loving. He's completely mental. Um, he's trying as everything that got mental to, to restage his own death. So we guess, we don't know this, that it was a planet where the uh, dominant species went down a technological path and self-destroyed, including a complete destruction of the planet. And so the planet had to move out of its body in form of black goo being exported. And now he's just seeking and looking for a new biosphere, which would be okay if, if he would behave like a guest. You know, I, I wouldn't right. mind, but he's doing what nature does, restaging to heal. So he's he's basically restaging his self-destruction. This is where the phoenix from the ash comes from, the myth. This is what this kind of myth describes, the character mm -hmm. that is restaging self-destruction. And um, he does this by uh, basically um, assimilating species, and creating what transhumanism calls a singularity. Mm -hmm. Being a bio-robot under a unified consciousness. And what we regard as technology is what he managed to have created for himself by humanity as his new planetary body. And this is what we call computer technology. A, a, a planet, a planetary consciousness works on uh, this liquid, the black goo, that is basically like more like a, a brain, like a thought and emotion processor, and it works on a storage in crystals. This is where computer technology goes to, to have these quartz uh, uh, crystals storing data. Yeah, and and uh, planetary consciousness is stored in every single crystal that grows out of water phase or out of magma. The moment it cools down and builds a crystal, the crystal is memorizing the moment it was created. And, and the, the consciousness had the ability to grab back into past memories. This is how planetary consciousness works. And actually, um, because this guest cannot access <clears throat> the memory of the planet, he needs to build his own new uh, crystalline sphere um, to be able to live here. And this is what is done with the chip technology. And this is what is funnily done also with the particulate plasma utilized by, mil by the military that build a crystalline cluster in the atmosphere that can carry this type of consciousness. Yeah, so now this is kind of, again, the end of the story where it leads to. Um, but it all ties in very beautifully. I, I, I'm, I'm in this for for four or five years now, so it's easy for me to just project right. it. <laughs> right, right. I don't know how far you can, <laughs> can follow. You have to, maybe you have you, to you, think of us as little baby steps, little babies. We're just, we're just like crawling around on the floor at this point. But I think it's important that we, we start to learn to walk. <laughs> okay, so I, I gave you a, a little bit of the bigger picture. Maybe it ties in, maybe not. We can go to the, to the core technology again, and maybe it helps if I explain how the pyramid works as a quantum computer. Right. So 
We have basically information processed on light level um, that is interacting with sacred geometry, both in transparent crystalline form with um, the substance black goo in this capstone and also the, the entire form of the pyramid is basically the interconnecting geometry between the two devices. So this is mounting a quantum computer that is okay. completely light-based, not no, no wires, no cables, no energy source, just self-processing consciousness that is interconnected between mass storage and processors. Um, now, what? Now, now we come to the interaction with the humanity. If you look at the Egyptian um, uh, symbols, you find the eye of Horus mm -hmm. on the capstone of the pyramid. The eye of Horus is a cross cut of the pineal gland. So our pineal gland is projected onto the capstone. And the other way around, the Hebrew alphabet that was introduced by this entity is a two-dimensional representation of the Star of David. Mm -hmm. So when we read, our eye nerve basically is transporting the representation of the Arc of the Covenant device into our brain. And at the same time, um, we project our brain into the capstone by visualizing our pineal gland within the capstone due to the symbolism used that was everywhere on the walls. Religious symbols are a core aspect of this technology. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we have a bidirectional um, um, consciousness interaction between the quantum computer and ourselves in a way that whenever we read something, the reading of the symbol is forming the shapes of the crystal in our head that can be read out because we basically project our pineal gland into the capstone. Mm -hmm. It needs, consciousness needs somehow to interact. Um, so, so this is basically a, a communication that links our thoughts, especially, especially the, the, the thoughts that are connected to reading with this device, okay. so that we can definitely be read out by the consciousness in the device, but possibly also the entity in the device can insert thoughts into our brain on the other half of the standing wave that connects the two. Mm -hmm. And it does something else. When I, when I start to read and write, the voice materializes behind my forehead. This mm -hmm. is not normal. Normally, if you talk, your voice is in your chest. If you listen at somewhere in the stem of the, of the brain or in the back of the head, rather, but this position here that basically everybody has who was brought up with reading, it's not normal. It's trained. It's artificial. Really? Um, yes. Yes. Talk to people that come from 100% from oral cultures. They don't have that voice in the head. Hmm. Yeah. This is why we kind of insist on bringing schooling um, to the third world. Because there are still humans living that for the development of the collective resist this process. Mm -hmm. Because they don't have this voice behind the forehead. And this is what we call our ego. Mm -hmm. The ego is the artificially created voice. And the ego on one hand is identified with a free will. We think we want to do something and then do it. This is our free will. The thought for this is here. Uh, so this is one part, um, but at the same time, this thought can be introduced from outside. And this is kind of the first step to be turned into a biorobot, the first step towards singularity. That we have something that we completely honor and love 
because it is associated with freedom, free will. Like many, many things, Freemasons are not called Freemasons for nothing. The word free somehow connects to the entire dark sphere. So our free will is part of this dark sphere <clears throat> that actually creates an I, an ego, that is open for external manipulation. And the manipulation is done by lingual programming. And okay. uh, it can be understood if you understand now we come to that point, the Ten Commandments. Because right. this is the first set of lingual programming that actually is responsible for all the evils of the world to spread. And it, it functions in, in the following way. If you look into the original languages, like things spoken in early Stone Age, it was like everybody understood everyone. We didn't have this Babylonian uh, uh, tower building and loss of the ability to understand each other. So kind of the emotional value, the picture value, the meaning of things was encoded in the expression with the voice. So everybody who could listen to an expression of a voice could read, directly read the meaning. Mm -hmm. It was kind of, it was sounds, but it was imprinted with telepathic communication about the meaning of things. This is how animal communication works today. There's highly specialized uh, um, people working with animals who need to understand animals. An animal can talk and they can understand the animals when they have the ability to read this meaning level. Mm -hmm. And within, within these meaning levels, uh, uh, things function different. It doesn't have something like not or no. If you want to describe something, you just describe what it, but you can never describe what is not. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't exist. You cannot descri describe something that doesn't exist. Yeah? This is natural in a way. The only thing they had, like if it was coming to um, to bringing some order into things, uh, you had a, a word that is still in the language in, in German and English. It's halt, halt, stop, mm -hmm. it's the meaning of stop. So if there's something you, that is not very clear. to do and you want to communicate you better stop before you do it mm -hmm. and then you had this word of halt halt in German in the Semitic language it's all also there it's all first letter gone last letter gone but but the emotional content of the word is still existing it's like stop mm -hmm. and in, in in original Hebrew or, or Biblical Hebrew, it still exists. If you say, take the, the sixth commandment, you shall not kill, um, it would have been actually, it would have been al mm tirzach. -hmm. Halt before you kill. Mm -hmm. Al, al, you have the al, al, freeze. Yeah? It's, it's emotional expression. But if you read the commandments, um, you, what you read is lo. It's the complete inversion of the letters. And this okay. is something you can read in the Kabbalah that if you want to express the, the real meaning of opposite, that you just swap the order of letters around and you get the exact opposite. So we have, a, an, an, within these commandments, we have an engraved double bind. The language people were taught, like the new word of don't, the negation, 
made their mind think, okay, I'm not supposed to do this, while the subconsciousness got exactly the opposite input. Right. The inversion of stop means let go if you have the idea to kill. And this is a double bind within one signal. Dogs drop dead if you do that. Humans don't drop dead, but they become unconscious. They, in that moment, they feel whatever comes up in, in, in the emotional body is evil. I'm not supposed to do this. I can't do this because it's forbidden. Uh, if I kind of go there, feel this within myself, I, I will have to realize that I am evil, although it wasn't even them. It was just a hidden command that was introduced by lingual programming. So they better don't go there at all. And then the entire area in the emotional body is basically isolated and goes subconscious. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it happens like it always happens. If things go subconscious, it becomes demonic. This is uh, uh, the natural form of demonic entities. Uh, we create, when we have something subconscious, this suppressed part forms an entity of itself because it's disconnected, it doesn't disappear. So it needs to form something stable within itself. And this is teasing us to the point where we do something stupid enough to let it come to life again, to, to let it be reintegrated into our being. So we create drama. We create a havoc. If, if um, uh, don't kill is basically lost within me as something completely subconscious. I need to kill somebody to reconnect. Mm. And, and this is kind of how all these different religions work with each other. You have the Christians who have all these Ten Commandments, but you know all these savages in South America, they need to be tortured and killed to turn them into Christians to save their soul. Islam, you know, you are meant to, to, to be good and don't kill anybody but all the non-believers, yeah? right. especially in the one surah that is not starting with the word in the name of Allah. Yeah. yeah, number six. Um, so basically, you, you, it's like a like a vessel that you put under high pressure, and then you you mount a valve that is pointing to the other tribe, to the other people, um, to have this restaging of all the evil you suppressed coming into the world. And this is what we see as the basic principle of politics today. Mm -hmm. We separate into the good and the bad. We have all this projection there. And then uh, the, the pressure can be released towards the people who are our enemies, which is completely unnatural. But this is the opening of the box of the Pandora, in a way. Yeah. And it's, it's lingual programming. And you can see how perfect this works. I, I just watched, funnily, on the internet, a show of a, a mentalist. Mm -hmm. in, in late late show, I think it was called. I don't know if you know that in the states. It it is in US format. I haven't had and the guy, TV. The, the guy in, in, invited a mentalist that kind of made fun of the guests and of the audience programming them. Mm -hmm. And what he did is he said, uh, all the people in the audience, two hundred people, please please pick up a paper, and I will ask you to draw a symbol of your choice, individual choice. Don't look at your neighbor's picture, just concentrate on your own, hide it from everybody else, draw something in hidden. Mm -hmm. um, and then he said, just to give you an idea how wide the ideas can get. You might draw, and then he took a paper and drew an S with a Superman t-shirt. Mm -hmm. You know, the super symbol S. And then he painted a cross, and then he painted a mountain. And then he painted uh, the, the um, Playboy rabbit. Mm -hmm. Just to give them an idea how diverse the ideas might get. And then he said, don't paint those crystals. Don't paint, the, not crystals, those, those symbols. symbols. I, 
the five were completely don't paint them. Right. And every, everybody went to painting and you had exactly two solutions, Pentagram and Star of David. Wow. 200 people painted a star because S for Superman and cross for T and the mountain for A and the rabbit, if you turn him upside down, turns out to be an R, form the word star. Don't paint star. No kidding. Has the inversion in it that is basically telling you in the lingual field, paint star. And this is how perfect this lingual programming is working. Wow. And it's not a coincidence that he used all the evening, even with the other experiments, he only used religious symbols as the basis for his tricks. So basically all the religions we have with all the religious symbols we use is demonic programming ling language to make us kill each other. Wow. Well, it's been working pretty well when you look at what's going on. <coughs> Proof of principle. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been working pretty well. So I do want to talk about the ego that you touched on very, very briefly. And a couple of my viewers have been mentioning the ego is evil. And so uh, could you go into that? <laughs> The evil is not ego. The evil is not you. This is very important. As long as there is this identification with the ego, there is no way to become yourself, to have this straight expression of um, your higher self, the, the divine aspect that is shining through every human, cannot express itself when um, the ego is in power and when the, the, the day consciousness is identified with this artificial structure and it's vulnerable, it can be pro programmed in many, many ways without realizing it's programmed. So there are many good reasons to de-identify from it and there are good reasons to completely dissolve it because nothing is lost. Nothing of importance is lost. But I, I would take that from the positive side. You know, when, when, you, when you start fighting something, you focus your energies on it, and then it even grows bigger. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so, so fighting the ego is kind of uh, the wrong way. Loving yourself is a good way. And if you, if you love yourself so much that you put all your attention on your true self, your higher self, your divine aspect, you might even have an ego chatting along in your head left. It's not so easy to switch it off. It needs also some biochemical help and medications to get rid of the grown structure here. So it's not like just a mental part. It's part of our, our biology. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're working on solutions to dissolve it biochemically. It works. Uh, my ego lost his mind already. He's still talking, but he, has, he doesn't make sense anymore when he talks. He, he kind of falls into completely disconnected patterns Never. of words that don't mount to any sense anymore. So I, I realized, okay, I'm, I'm on the way to completely dissolve it. But it, it was a lot of training and also uh, some of the, of the um, uh, supplements we developed to, especially the, the purpose was of, uh, helping with the old age disease because this is part of the fallout of these transhumanistic concepts. Um, so this old age disease supplement turned out to be extremely helpful in dissolving the artificial brain structures because they are not natural, they are not copper-based nerves, but uh, ferromagnetic uh, nerves that are basically 
designed to be accessible by microwave radiation and external radiation for even more control. So, so this is basically, but, but we can do this another time. It's just, um, um, I just wanted to say it's not easy to kill off the ego. It needs more. But this, this is kind of topic transhumanism. We can do this. I would love to do this another time with a full show. Right. Um, yes, and we definitely but good have news to get into that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the rest is actually a training of the, the most important point is where you center yourself. Consciousness all, always has a center. If I intensely think, I picture myself being centered around my head. If I truly love somebody, I feel myself centered around my heart. If I want something, I feel myself centered around my soul. Plexus. If it's just an affair, yeah, I feel myself centered around the sexual chakras. So, so the, the center of consciousness can maneuver through my system. If I do shamanic work, if I go somewhere else into the astral realm, my, 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 my center goes into a non-local realm. Mm -hmm. um, that functions completely different, but still I'm centered. So, so uh, something that is very good to do is to train the awareness of where you are. Because only if you are aware where you are, you can maneuver through yourself consciously. And if you catch yourself with an ego thought, you realize, ah, I've been in my head again. So, so it's not really trustworthy what I just thought. Let's go into my heart and rethink it. Right. And there is a voice in the heart. And if you have a voice in the heart and not in the brain, you, you know for sure this is not my ego talking. This is my higher self expressing itself. Right. And this, this is also how we do science. Maybe some people think, how, how does he know all this? Um, if, if I would have done those things with normal university research, I think I would have needed a budget of two billion to come where I am. Right. But this is not how we work. We have kind of the, the inner source um, that is has the ability to feel what is true and what is not true. And this ability develops inside the heart chakra. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you affirm something that is not true in your heart, you don't get the sentence into the heart chakra. It blocks somewhere here and doesn't dive deeper. So, you know, this is not true. If you find the true... The, the, the real truth, and you affirm it, it dives into your heart chakra, and whoosh, here you go, then you know, ah, I've got it, you know. Right. It, it's, for most of the people, it's an ability that completely got lost, because they never left their ego in, in their life. So they don't even have the experience of, of um, experiencing truth on a spiritual level. Right, right. Well, and that's why I think so many people have, like, trouble right here. You know, it doesn't go, it can't pass, it can't go past that area. And I think also a lot of people that are sort of disconnected but are trying to connect, a big pit in the stomach, you know, when something is just not right. I mean, people... People know their chakras without knowing their chakras yet. So I think there are some little yeah. ways where you have a, you know, you have a something in your throat, you can't talk, you know, or you have a pit in your stomach and, and people are aware of those things. And those are sort of old sayings that have been carried over, but that's where we're still connected to inside mm -hmm. of us. 
We, as, I, I just can say how I experienced myself. I always could look there, I could sense this, but it was like observing something from a huge distance. Right. And uh, this is where I'm kind of standing now because I, I really had uh, um, a huge distance to myself, like uh, direction of uh, autism spectrum, if I look at my early childhood. Mm -hmm. um, I just now start to develop the ability to really be there. No, it's, it's not that I, I, I'm already, I, I, I'm not the one who already arrived. Maybe this is something I, I can share or should share because uh, it's important to always be rational about the state of art and the state where you are in the moment. And okay. I'm, I'm kind of telling all this now so people might think, yeah, he got there. No, I, I'm not there yet. Um, I'm still. Um, I, what I can sense at the moment, yes, I can listen to my gut, I can sense my gut, I can sense my heart. Um, I managed to, to kind of dissolve the, the big block that was keeping me out, which was a tremendous experience. So now the way is free and I can force myself down into myself. And then everything gets extremely intense and it's too much for me. And I can hold it for a minute and then whoop, it's dropping out again. And yes, I want to get there because I think this is the, the full potential of being a human, being emotional. But on one hand, the world is not not yet in a, in a shape where it's fun to be fully empathic, fully conscious and in full intensity all the time. This is actually what caused the expulsion from paradise with the arrival of the black goo and this traumatic experience of the secondary system within duality, suddenly everybody who was in full empathy and emotion um, got hit by this wave of pain. And this was what chucked them out of the, of the garden of paradise, of the connection to Mother Earth. Mother Earth was in pain from all the consciousness, the stored consciousness released into the planetary grid. Mm -hmm. So everybody who was there felt this pain immediately. And this is what pressed us out of the body, mm -hmm. disconnected us from our instincts. And this is what we need to overcome. And we need to, to learn to dive back into. And if, if we bring ourselves to the point where we can um, control ourselves to the point where we can take on this pain and process it and dissolve it within ourselves. Right. Then the situation is healed and we are back in paradise. So it's if, if, if somebody says, oh, but I'm not there, it's a pity, I'm a bad guy, I'm not spiritual. No, we, we all left that place and we all need to go back. And the steps back are extremely hard to take because we forgot where to walk. Too, and it's extremely painful because pain hasn't been felt for millennia. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a lot of pain that needs to be felt. Pain also caused by us, still being caused by us, that needs to be felt before the field is clear again, before everything is love again. Right, right. And, and uh, you know, in, in this society... Uh, planetarily, in most cultures, pain is just not even allowed, or feeling is not even allowed or encouraged. It's really discouraged. And as soon as you feel deeply, you should be on some medication or another to stop the feeling process. Yeah, ADHS. ADHS? Yeah, oh. the rest of humanity should be put on drugs. Right. They are feeling reality. Yes. Yeah. 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 And 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 I always I'm always awestruck how few people um, still show emotion on my channel much more so than in other places I think. But um, I feel we need we are emotional beings. We need to 
experience them fully, good, bad, all of it. And, and I have this sign mm. that on my fridge that reminds me that says the only way out is through. And to pretend something isn't there is not going to make it go away. So I think it's mm. really extremely important to feel deeply on all levels. Mm. And yes. so, Hara, you also wanted to go into... Um, well, we wanted to go into church and the role of the church. Um, can we can mm -hmm. we go into that and the belief systems that we are um, programmed to have? Yes. Um, first thing to realize is the church is just one of the many cults dealing with black goo. Mm -hmm. We have priests coming from the Vatican, uh, working with black goo stones while doing exorcism. We had altar stones um, built into every altar in the older church in Europe uh, to fill actually the, the resonant structure of the church building with a satanic consciousness. We have wow. a huge block, as if I'm well informed, a huge block of black wool sitting right below the dome and Peter, the Peter's dome in Rome. Wow. I'm now, not sure I wanna, about I this. I want to say something. Uh, I want to have, I have a quick other question that maybe some of my viewers will mm -hmm. also have. Black goo, is that a real name for the substance? Is that the real term for it? Is that... Where does that it, it's the one from? from from how it looks like. Mm -hmm. It's it's like crude oil. It looks like crude oil. It just behaves different. It right. forms liquid crystals and uh, alters your emotional structure okay. if you come close to it. So it's um, and the, the only thing that I don't like about the term is hardly anyone knows about the two types of black goo earth type and alien type as the, the fundament of duality. Mm -hmm. So people mix them up. Most of the people mix them up. So black goo is always evil. No, uh, I, 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 when, when I first got hold of earth type black goo, I ate it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to reconnect, so I had some and uh, just put it into my mouth and swallowed it to re-invite Mother Earth into my body. So this is the friendly black goo. Right, yeah. This is the good one. And the other one, um, I've got it 400 meters from my house, hidden underground in the garden in an area where I don't even get to except mm -hmm. one or twice a week because they don't want to get close. So it's a huge difference. Right. And the one in, that inspired to the uh, blood and fire sacrifice cults is the alien one, so the evil one. And you can see this within the entire uh, practice, religi religious practice of Christianity. We are worshipping a guy hang, hanging on a cross suffering. We drink his blood during service. What else do you need to realize that this is black? Right. Yeah. Somebody claims, yeah, this is all about love, but it's only on the on the label. If you look inside, it's about pain, not about love. Right. right. Like the administration of the dark realm is based on pain, death, and torture. And this is what Christianity is about, pain, death, and torture. Yeah. So even if they claim it's about love, no, it's not. Just look at what you do in church. Yeah. Now, some yeah. Christians might argue and say, well, it's um, in the end, Jesus resurrects and he saves us from the evil. Yeah, he, he, they, they got him down from the cross. He moved to um, Kashmir. Mother Mary died on the way somewhere in Afghanistan. Her tomb is in Afghanistan. He lived for another 45 years in Kashmir. 
and he's buried in Kashmir, you can visit his grave. <laughs> I love that. And Thank uh, I you. think four, 400,000 Christians still following his later teachings. Wow. So, yes, welcome to reality. <laughs> yes. You know? Yes. <laughs> it's all based on, uh, I, I'm, we are on American broadcasting, so I'm, I'm not supposed to, to use bad words. <laughs> <laughs> well, on my channel, you are allowed to use any words you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because we're not in the mainstream media. <laughs> Anyways, no, no, we don't need to. Uh, yeah, yeah, th this is what it's all about. It's all about deception and tricking people into the dark aspects. And uh, yeah, then you have the Ten Commandments that actually bring evil intent into people that didn't have evil intentions before. And then it creates, like, because you always, basically, when you do something following the evil intent that was implanted into you, um, with, with, with normal incidents, like when, when I step on the foot of somebody because I, I had my attention somewhere else, I immediately apologize, say, I'm sorry. Um, the German saying is even more beautiful. In, in German, you say, es tut mir leid. Right. It does make me suffer that I hurt you, which is restoration of empathy. You yes. signal that uh, you are in empathy again. Right. And, and this is how, how you say sorry in a, in a useful language. And then empathy is restored and the guy who got hurt um, can trust you again because he realized that you basically got him on the screen again and there's no wish on your side to hurt him again. So he can fully trust you again and then all the feeling of guilt is out of the picture. Now if, yeah. if I have commandments so the guilt is not towards the one I made suffer, it's towards God. A God that doesn't even exist in that form. Right. Not as described by the church. This is Satan who is worshipped with Torture energy and suffering and pain and death. Yeah. Um, so, so the real God was out of the picture for millennia. He was not allowed to interfere because we decided to show who we are. So, um, yeah, yeah. Then, then, then um, the guilt is towards an artificial character that doesn't communicate with me. Right. I cannot dissolve this. I cannot say I'm sorry and restore empathy because he's not empathic at all. He doesn't do that. He doesn't go into that type of things. So I'm, I'm left behind with piles and piles and piles of guilt I cannot get rid. This is what the church did. They said, okay, you pay a little of money and then we, we will erase the guilt from the books. Right. Right. Uh, that was kind of the first idea um, where uh, the, the, the early, the early uh, types of a monetary system came into being. Then the Protestants completely disconnected this thing. Again, the German language is, uh, has a better memory of the truth than the English. Um, in, in German, uh, what you have when you have guilt is Schuld. Mm -hmm. And when you have um, a debt on the bank, you have Schulden, even more right. of them. Same word, yeah. Same, same, same word. So they basically pulled out this monetary thing that the church cashed in to forgive, completely removed it from the religious background and introduced the word into the banking system. So if you took a loan and you were supposed to pay it back, you were guilty. Yeah. This is how things evolve. Now, if, if, you, if you try to come back to kind of real emotional values, the banksters that mess up the planet, they should feel guilty for what they do. Right, right. This is typical for the satanic system that everything is completely inverted. 
Everything and is hundred. It's not different. It's hundred percent mirrored and inverted. Right, and that is Just really how it feels. Brains. Yeah, and it's so much how it feels nowadays. It really is so much how it feels. Everything is upside down. Everything feels really upside down. And I think that's what so many people are struggling with because they want the truth, but they, what they're told is not the truth, but they don't know where to find the truth. It's all, it's all a big, you know, noodle salad right now and nothing is figured out and people are really looking for what's going on because in their heart they can feel that something isn't right anymore. It just isn't right. But they don't know the, the thing, where to yeah, go. This is it's the trick with the with the inversion. We are taught to correct things in steps, right? And you cannot you cannot um, flip a card in steps. It's impossible. You try to lift it here, whoop, it jumps back down, and this is what happens to the minds, to the egos. The people do not have the um, the ability or the courage to completely flip cards. But this is what is needed to, to be done. You, you need to realize actually everything that has been taught is deception and lie. Everything is exactly the opposite of what it is. Uni universities, make sure that we do not get scientific understanding of our world. Yeah. Religious institutions, make sure that we do not develop spirituality. Yeah. The monetary system, you know, this thing that claims to uh, keep an eye on uh, that everything is kind of righteous and balanced, uh, is driving the planet into scarcity that is killing billions, just as a mindset. No need for that at all. There's abundance. Yeah. But we are forced to, to not see the abundance and completely dive into their scarcity, killing each other. You know, if, if you have a mother that is boiling stones in the evening, hoping that their children in the, sl in the slum will fall asleep from the bubbling uh, sound of the water because they believe it's going to be potatoes this evening. The children are not starving because there's nothing to eat. They are starving because we are all implementing this scarcity and refuse to let go from things we don't need. Right. Yeah, this is what monet the monetary system does with us. It's the exact opposite. It's, it's about justice. No. The monetary system made that, I think, I don't know, 10 people own 50% of all the assets of the world. What's justice? That didn't work for them. Exactly. There's no justice inside the monetary system. It's just uh, a thing that is driving us into the feeling of scarcity, making us controllable to make sure that we kill each other. This yeah. is the monetary yeah. system. And people sit there and hold on to their stupid papers that are even already colored. They can't even use it as as a piece of paper to note right. down anything <laughs> right. because right. it's already noted down with things yeah. that do not make sense at all. So why can't we let go from this? And when you try, you realize how these Trojan horses basically like, like a machine work together. Yes. And it's, it's close to impossible to get rid of only one. Yeah. But what, what is possible is kind of to, to, command yourself from the higher perspective to acknowledge and realize that we have been fooled, that everything is upside down, and that we flip ourselves as a card to become healthy. Right, right. And yes. then it's a completely uncontrollable situation because you collide with your family, you collide with, any, with your neighbors. It's getting uncomfortable for a while. You're swimming because there's no coherent picture of the world for that moment. Complete yeah. loss of control. Yeah. But right. it's okay. It's right. okay. It feels right. weird, but you don't die from this. Right. Right. Yes. And, and change always feels weird. It's the nature of it. You know, it feels weird at first, but then you... Um, 
you relax in a different way. You become different. You literally become different. <coughs> and I only have a little teeny weeny glimpses, you know, where I feel like, ah, you know, everything is great. Everything is in its order. Everything is playing out the way it needs to play out. And, and meditation certainly helps a lot and silence and being deeply connected to nature. That's really what for me is the key to be deeply connected with nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, th there's one step before I found, uh, essential, um, and this is kind of this finding your the right perspective within mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah, you you can you can send your ego into nature, and um, it will not have the experience. Mm -hmm. And and the, the first step actually is a completely inner step that needs contemplation and isolation. Right. Um, to find that point where your true self is acting from. This is absolutely essential. It's the first thing to do, and then it's a lot of practice to keep yourself in this tune. This is what really needs training, 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 uh, self-awareness, um, patience towards yourself. Love towards yourself when it doesn't work. Okay, next attempt, doing it again. Um, because as long as you're not there, you perceive the world in projections. When, when you identify with your ego, everything that is wrong with you will appear in the outside world. And you will be tempted to fix the outside world to get things done and to get right. things right. Right. And and but but the the this is kind of the reality aspect within the mental field, what we uh, perceive as um, um, causalities. But there's also something that we perceive as synchronicities which is the character of the emotional field level. Mm -hmm. That, for example, when, when, uh, when I'm in my mind, when I'm in my ego, and somebody is getting angry with me, mm -hmm. I will immediately try to find a way to calm him down, to protect myself, or to fight him off. Yeah? This is normal behavior. When, as long as it is guided with a mental field. When I swap the position and go into um, the true self, somebody is approaching me with anger. And the first question is, do I feel his anger or don't I feel his anger? Am I in empathy with him? Or do I just see him screaming, hear him screaming, and don't know what's happening? If I'm in empathy, I realize, okay, um, we might have a topic here, but at least I'm healed at that point. If, if this is coming as an attack, but I don't feel it in my own body as an empathic resonance, um, then I just realize, oh, he came to cure me. He came to reconnect me to my own feeling of anger. He apparently is just expressing my unfelt anger. And he's doing me a huge favor of mirroring the part of myself that I cannot feel yet. Right. It's a completely different approach and it all only depends on the perspective. The, the mental perspective is always projecting out what is inside, and the true self is always trying to find the self-awareness within your own system. And it's like, it's a, the best picture I could see, it's like, like being in a cinema. You're the projector, and reality is the screen. Mm -hmm. 
And you cannot change the course of a movie by painting color on the screen. Right. You need to work on the film and the projector. And this is yourself. So the only way to save the planet, the only way to change things is to control or to heal what is projected into reality from our substance. So change the substance and the world will heal overnight. Mm -hmm. This is what, I, it's not everything wrong about the teachings of Christ. When he said yeah. we can move mountains, he was on the spot. But we don't move them out there in the world. We move the mountains inside of us and then the world changes. Right, right. Beautifully said, Harald. <laughs> Beautifully said. And I know you um, have to make dinner, but um, I don't want to take too much of your time today. And I know you will be back again, hopefully very soon, because we have so much more that needs to be talked about. And one of the things that we really want to talk about also is malnutrition and transhumanism and uh, biochemical weapons. So that's another thing that really needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. But time, that's, that's literally a whole show in itself and, and uh, another longer one at that. So I'm not sure, is there anything you want to say in closing that you would like to convey to everybody? <laughs> it's, it's, it's difficult it is difficult one, one thing comes up um, when, when you try to kind of test this perspective that we've been discussing today it is completely normal that all emotions come at the same time when you have this effect you can kind of uh, be sure that you got it right because it is scary, it is intense on many different ways, it is a huge joy to rediscover things that got lost. Um, when I, I, I have always this, this point of, of uh, comparing fun and joy. Fun is outside of paradise. Fun is an entity in complete isolation that somehow has biochemical reactions that used to be connected to something beautiful, but it's not anymore. Mm -hmm. And the motion, the, 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 the moment you have like fun in empathy, and I experience this only during healing situations. Mm -hmm. This is actually the, the only moments in my life where I experience joy is when, when, when I work with an individual and, and we manage to make something that got lost within himself, that got un, unconscious, subconscious. When we bring this back and for the first time in his life, he's breathing into his stomach or whatever the, the physical change in his system looks like. And I can feel him getting there. This is pure joy that makes me cry out of joy. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the quality it needs. It's, it's like, like discovering this joy of rediscovering oneself. Right. Um, right. Discovering the joy in inspiring each other. And this is where the entire New Age community goes wrong. They, they, they think and act in the, in the pattern of healing each other. It doesn't work. One person cannot heal another person. It's like, like we are cars. The higher self is the car mechanic that knows his own car. And if you want to fix your car, you need your mechanic. Have a go at it. So you can only fix yourself. You cannot have somebody else fix you. You can have somebody remove symptoms. But it's yeah. like with a normal medical system, remo removing, s s uh, removing symptoms is buying time for yeah. not doing anything. Right. That's all. If you want to heal, you, you need to go to the root and remove the root of the problem. Right. 
Yes. And this is something that can be only done by every single person on himself. And yes, uh, inspiring people is a thing of joy. This is why I love to, to speak out in public, because it's, it's just joyful to do, to do so. And getting feedbacks and seeing that people pick up the inspiration. But inspiration alone doesn't change a thing. It needs to, 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 to have this path that is walked down individually. Yes. Yes. And this is maybe the last beautiful, sometimes English language has beautiful words as well, more beautiful than the German one. This is everyone's response ability. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. beautifully said. Because yeah, everyone has the ability to respond on this input. Right. And once one has the ability to respond, it's within the responsibility. Right. Great. Very, very well said, Harald. Very, very, very. <laughs> I switch in my head, it switches German English, German English. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much for coming on. It was truly a joy and my audience loved having you, as did I. And um, I can't wait to have you back, hopefully soon, within the next couple of weeks. And we can continue the conversation on, uh, on the next topic because I really think we should, we should stay on it. And... Um, and yes, continue yes. the path we're walking and not not give people too much time to breathe in between. <laughs> keep them, yeah, keep you, them you, at you it. Are, you are in contact with the audience when they uh, look like being able to digest more. Just give me a call. Oh, I've I'll, got plenty of they'll, time. They'll be ready mm -hmm. soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Harold. And I'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.